Chad, you're muted. Of course. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks everyone for attending tonight and welcome to this community information meeting for the Pasco neighborhood in Phil Street Lighting Project. This is city project number 103408 and it's in council district nine. My name's Chad Allen, I'm the project manager for the project and the project engineer Dunaway Associates is also on the call. Um, here are, is, are the topics we're gonna cover in the meeting tonight. In just a second, I'm gonna introduce the entire project team. We're gonna talk about project funding. We're gonna review the scope and goals of the project. We're gonna look at the overall project limits and we also have a lighting analysis. We'll look at the existing lighting analysis and also the lighting analysis showing the proposed conditions that will exist in the neighborhood after the project's done. Um, we're gonna look at the proposed improvements and we'll go street by street, looking at all the new street lights we're going to add. And then we'll talk about project status and schedule. And finally, in the end, I'll show you my contact information and we'll take questions about um, the project and about the presentation. So regarding the project team, again, my name's Chad. I'm the project manager. Jeff Allen is also uh, on the call. He just introduced the meeting. Thanks, Jeff. And then we have a couple other folks from the city on the call tonight. Courtney Davis is here. She's our street light expert. Thanks, Courtney, for attending the meeting. And Clint Hoover is here. Clint um, runs the group where this kind, these kind of projects are initiated and, and out of out of which they are funded. So thanks, Clint, for attending the meeting. And then we have our engineering team, Josh Wright and Sarah Guy are on the call. So we have plenty of um, smart people here to answer questions at the end of the presentation. So this project was funded as part of the 2018 bond program. If you look at the bond uh, book for the 2018 bond program, $10 million worth of street light projects were funded. And um, that money was to go for citywide installation of roadway lighting in neighborhoods, specifically focused on infill lighting and filling gaps and making upgrades. And that's exactly what we're gonna do as part of this project. Um, the project scope and goals, we're going to add new lighting in the Pascal neighborhood area. We're going to fill in gaps and implement street lighting spacing in accordance with our current standards. The ideal spacing for our street lighting is 200 feet. And then we have, um, we try to stick to a maximum spacing of 300 feet. We're also going to update the existing lighting in the neighborhood to new LED um, lighting fixtures. And then all the new poles we put up in the neighborhood will have the new um, LED lighting feet, um, heads. And for this project, we're going to use wooden poles and overhead wires. And here's some pictures that kind of show what we're going to construct in the neighborhood. On the left, you see the wooden pole, and this is the typical arm mounting on the wooden pole. This middle picture shows the new LED fixtures we're going to install in the neighborhood. And then on the right, this picture shows the um, total street light mounted assembly. So this is what the street lights in the neighborhood are gonna look like. This is the wooden pole. This is the overhead um, conductor wire and the new arm and the LED fixture. So this is the, these are the type of street lighting improvements we're proposing in the Pascal neighborhood. So this is an overall map that shows the project limits. The project's bounded on the north side by Park Hill Way and on the south side by Westbury Street. On the west side of the project is Forest Park Boulevard and on the east is 8th Avenue and Cleburne Road. Also on this map, I, ho I hope you can see these green triangles. These green triangles represent existing lighting. Um, they're kind of shaded in the Pascal area, but hopefully you can see them. What I wanted to point out is you can see right now, mostly inside the project limits, these green triangles or the existing lights are at the intersections at the cross streets. So um, you see a green triangle here in um, McPherson Avenue at Wayside Avenue, and then down here in Canty Street, but you don't see any in between. So 
mid block, you don't see any of those green triangles. And if you go all the way across here, sort of in the mid block area, you don't see any of those green triangles. So there's no existing lighting in the mid block area that you can see on this map. And that's true down here, south of that, and also down here. If you look at this area to the east, you see that in the mid block between the cross streets, you see a lot of additional lighting mid block. So right now that doesn't exist in the Pasco area neighborhood, but that's what we're going to install as part of this project. Here's an exhibit that shows the lighting analysis. <clears throat> And you'll also see that we have gaps in the, in the mid block areas. So these orange um, balls of color sort of indicate the existing lighting that exists out there today. So you can see these orange orbs again at the cross streets here and here in Wayside Avenue and here, but not really mid block. You don't see any of those orange orbs and all the way through in this area between McPherson and Canty mid block you don't see any of that orange lighting that orange um, glowing orb there or between canty and loudon you don't see that so this is these are the existing conditions but if you look at the proposed lighting analysis for some reason i'm having a problem changing slides i'm sorry you see that we fill in um, the gaps in mid block so you can now you now see a lot more of that orange um, globe the orbs in the mid block area in the project. So you see a lot more light, light coverage in the neighborhood after the project. This is what it's going to be like after we construct the street lighting project. So this is existing. You can see a lot of gaps between the cross streets and this is proposed and you see a lot more light in the neighborhood. So now I'm gonna look street by street at the proposed improvements. Um, we have 10 of these slides to go through. I, I'm sorry if it gets a little monotonous. We have people who are calling in. So I'm going to try to um, specify some addresses where we're installing this lighting. First, I wanna show people, show you all what's on these slides. In the middle, you see the large map. This and it contain, contains an aerial view of the neighborhood. So you can see people's rooftops. Down here, we have a legend. And as I go through these 10 slides, I'm basically just going to be identifying two different things. The red existing street lights, and you can see that on the map here and here. And then in yellow, we have new proposed street lights. So as I go through these slides, I'm gonna be pointing out the new proposed street lights mainly. Over here on the left, we see a north arrow. On this slide, north is up, and then we have a key map. So as we're going through these, this red rectangle on the key map will, will kind of show what area of the neighborhood we're looking at. So right now we're looking at the northwest area of the neighborhood. And on this slide, you see Park Hill Way, which is sort of the northern limit of the project to the north, Forest Park Boulevard on the west side and Fraser Avenue on the east side. So on this overall map, you can see that we're adding south of Park Hill Way and Wayside, we're adding a new street light between 2517 and 2521 Wayside Avenue right here. And then we're adding another new street light south of that in front of 2532 Wayside Avenue. On the next slide, we go a block south of that. You can see on the key map, we've moved south. At the top of the page now is West Roberts Street. So we're looking at the area in West Roberts and south of that. And again, Forest Park Boulevard is on the left side and Townsend Drive is on the right. We are adding some new street lighting in West Roberts Street. You can see a new street light here um, adjacent to 2602 Forest Park Boulevard and another new street light at 2537 Wayside Avenue and um, in West Roberts Street. And then south of that, in Wayside Avenue, we're adding three new street lights you can see on this slide. One right here um, adjacent to 2608 Wayside Avenue, one right in front of 2620 Wayside Avenue, and one between 2632 and 2636 Wayside Avenue. Over here in Fraser Avenue, we're also adding new street lights between 2604 and 2608 Fraser Avenue, another one south of that at 2620 Fraser Avenue, and another one south of that at 2628 Fraser Avenue. And over here in Townsend Drive, 
right up here near the intersection of West Robert Street, we're adding a new street light between 2600 and 2604 Townsend Drive. I'm gonna go to the next slide. Again, we're gonna go a block south. So at the top of the sheet, now you see McPherson Avenue. We're adding some new lighting in McPherson. We have a new street light pole right here in McPherson between 2701 Forest Park and 2700 Wayside Avenue. Another new light pole right here in McPherson adjacent to 2700 Fraser Avenue and another one um, to the east of that. I don't have the address here. It's um, close to 2705 Fraser Avenue. And then south of McPherson and Wayside, we're adding an additional lighting mid block, three new poles in Wayside Avenue. One between 2704 and 2708 Wayside Avenue, another one between 2717 and 2721 Wayside Avenue, and another one south right outside in front of 2732 Wayside Avenue. In Fraser Avenue, we're adding a, another one south of McPherson, a new street light pole between 2705 and 2709 Fraser. Another one south of that between 2716 and 2720 Fraser, and another one south of that between 2729 and 2733 Fraser Avenue. And then over here on Townsend Drive, we're adding a new street light between 2704 and 2708 Townsend. Another one south of that in front of 2720 Townsend. And then further south of that between 2728 and 2732 Townsend Drive. Um, now this slide shows the area just east of that. So McPherson is still at the top of the slide. There's existing street lights in McPherson there. So now we're looking at Gordon Avenue south of McPherson. We're adding three new street lights. One between 2705 and 2709 Gordon, another one in front of 2721 Gordon, and another one between 2729 and 2733 Gordon Avenue. Over in Livingston, another three new street lights, one at 2704 Livingston, one between 2716 and 2720 Livingston, and then another one in front of 2733 Livingston Avenue. And then over here in Stanley, um, Two new street lights on this page, one across the street from 2708 Stanley Avenue and one between 2716 and 2724 Stanley Avenue. This is um, back to the east and south again. Now we're looking at the block that's south of Canty Street. Again, Forest Park is on the west side and Townsend is on the um, East side, we are adding some new lighting in West Canty Street um, right here, but next to 2737 Forest Park Boulevard and then over here next to 2736 Fraser Avenue and then another one at 2737 Fraser Avenue. And then again, south of Canty in Wayside, we're adding two new street lights, one between 2805 and 2809 Wayside and another one down here uh, across the street from 2832 Wayside Avenue. In Fraser Avenue, south of Canty, um, we're adding a new street light pole between 2804 and 2808 Fraser Avenue, and then between 2816 and 2820 Fraser Avenue, and then another one further south adjacent to 2200 Loudon Street. And then over here in Townsend Drive, we're adding a new street light pole um, out in front of 2808 Townsend Drive and between 2816 and 2820 Townsend Drive, and then one further south of that also in Townsend Drive. A couple, a couple of properties south of 2820 Townsend Drive. This is the area just east of that. Again, it's south of Canty Street. Um, we're adding some additional poles here in Canty. One next to 2734 Gordon Avenue, another one um, at 2736 Livingston Avenue, and another one here at 2736 Stanley. In Gordon Avenue, south of Canty, we're adding three new street light poles. One right here um, between 2806 and 2808 Gordon Avenue, another one in front of 2820 Gordon Avenue, and another one in front of 2832 Gordon Avenue. In Livingston, we're adding three new street poles as shown on this um, slide, one at 2808 Livingston, 
another one between 2821 and 2825 Livingston, and another one between 2834 and 2836 Livingston. So this is Loudon Street. Um, North is still up. The key map is down here. We're almost done going through these. We have um, four more. This is Loudon Street on the north side of um, RL Pascal High School. We are adding some additional lighting in Loudon Street. Um, one pole right here at 2845 Forest Park, another one at 2200 Loudon, and another one at 2100 Loudon. Um, the next slide is just east of this area. So this is sort of east um, of the high school. Um, some additional lighting in Loudon Street, one right here at 2837 Townsend Drive. And then south of Loudon on Gordon Avenue, there's two new street light poles proposed in this area. One is right across the street from 2905 Gordon, and another one is right there in front of 2921 Gordon. In Livingston, we have one between 2905 and 2909 Livingston, and that's all that's shown on this sheet. And we have two more areas to look at real quickly, and then we'll be done. And we can go back to these maps if anyone has any questions about their specific property. Um, when, when we're finished in a few minutes, we can definitely go back and look at these. So on this map, north is now pointing to the right. So this is the area that's um, east of the high school, and you can see West Townsend Drive and West Bowie Street and Gordon Avenue. So this is um, sort of at the north side and east of the high school. In Townsend Drive, we're adding some new light poles. Um, one across the street from 2012 Westbury Street, another one in front of the Shine Express Car Wash at 3021 Townsend Drive, another one in front of 2100 Westbury Street, and then another one over here at the corner of West Bowie and West Townsend Drive. In Gordon Avenue, you see several new street light poles in Gordon Avenue in this area. One in front of 3033 Gordon, another one across the street from 3029 Gordon, another one in front of 3017 Gordon, and then this one is across the street from 1917 Bowie Street. Over here in Gordon Avenue, north of Bowie, there's one between 2945 and 2941 Gordon, and then another one across the street from 2929 Gordon Avenue. And then this is our last overall um, neighborhood map. This is just east of the last slide. This shows the area of Bowie Street and Livingston Avenue, just east of where we were just looking at. And we have some new poles in Livingston Avenue right here. Um, one in front of 2941 Livingston Avenue, one in front of 2933 Livingston Avenue, and another one in front of 2921 Livingston Avenue. So that concludes me going through all of the street maps. Um, Again, we can go back and look at those if someone has a specific question about a, a specific property. I also wanted to point out, I was just focusing on the new street lights. On the legend, you can see that sometimes there's an existing street light and we're just replacing the head, or there's an existing street light and we're just replacing the arm. For instance, um, if you can see it on this um, slide right here at the intersection of Livingston and West Bowie, this yellow piece indicates that we're just gonna replace the lighting head this pole is going to remain and we're going to replace the lighting head. So throughout the whole neighborhood, even though I didn't call it out, we're replacing lighting heads, lighting fixtures and upgrading them to LEDs. And sometimes we're replacing the existing arms in the neighborhood. So this slide shows the status and schedule of the project. We're currently um, completed with 60% design. And so we wanted to reach out to the community and talk about this project and give you a chance to provide input or feedback about the project while we're still in the design process. Our next steps include um, constructing a constructability field review. So me and the project team are gonna be out in the neighborhood over the next couple of weeks, and we're gonna walk around and look at every single one of these poll locations, make sure that they make sense, see if there's any obstructions in the way, and just make sure that we're moving forward in the right direction with the design of the project. After that, we'll conduct a peer review meeting where the whole team at the city um, and all of our departments will be looking at the plans and making sure that we don't miss anything and that there's not any errors on the plan so that we have a good set of construction plans. 
And then we'll just finish up the design of the project. Josh and Sarah will finish up the design. We're expecting that to happen in the summer of this year in June or July. We'll start construction in winter because we have to go through um, a four month long advertising and bidding process. So we'll finish our design in summer and then we'll advertise and bid the project. And then we'll be able to start construction in winter and five or six months later, we expect to be done with construction of the project in summer of next year. So this is my contact information. I'm Chad. My telephone number is 817-392-8021. Feel free to call me with any questions you might have about the project that come into your mind after this meeting. And then also here's a link. We have a project web page on the City of Fort Worth website. So you can go to this link and um, visit our project web page. This presentation is on there. You can look through that again and we'll be posting other information about the project on that project web page. So. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions right now. And we have a whole team of folks here familiar with the project. So, um, Jeff, are there any questions in the chat box? There are no questions at the moment in the chat box. We can open up questions if anybody would like to unmute and, and ask a question or talk about the project or um, there. I just saw a question pop up. Yep, just had a new one. Do we know uh, how approximately how many additional lights are we are gaining for the neighborhood? You know, I meant to count those <laughs> right before the meeting, and I didn't. Um, I bet I bet Sarah or or Josh know that. Hey, Sarah, do you know how many lights we're adding, or Josh? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. It was. Can we pull? Can we pull up that cost estimate and look at the number yeah. of new poles? Okay. We're going to count the, we're going to pull up the cost estimate and look at the number of new polls and give you an estimate. I apologize. I knew that question was going to be asked. Now I meant to count those before the meeting and I forgot. I think I, Jeff, I think I just saw another question pop up while we're working on that first answer. Yeah. It's, uh, Anita wants us to discuss the overhead wires referenced earlier. Um, will there be wires between the new streetlight poles? Yes, ma'am. There will be wires as let me go back to that. Photo shown previously. And it may be hard for you to see. I don't know. Jeff, can you tell me? Can you see these cyan lines that are between the poles? Yes, Chad, we can. Okay. Um, those are the overhead wires um, between the streetlights. Um, Courtney, that was you. Do you want to talk about those? Sure. Not a problem. Hi, everybody. I'm Courtney. Hey, Courtney. Um, thanks. <laughs> um, so, yes, those will be overhead wires, um, kind of like you saw in the picture before. They're just simple bonded wires. They're aluminum overhead. Um, they're pretty much almost the same size as the smaller ones you see on most overhead utility poles to begin with. So a lot of them are already in this area, and um, they'll just be con consistently there as usual. They're the blue lines, so it'll be easy connect. They will not be in the way. Um, we've made sure that nothing's going to hit anything and nothing's going to be obstructed. We are watching in case there's any problems with canopy overhead from the trees. So we've been very careful to make sure that we keep out of the way and that it's not obstructive. Thank you, Courtney. I heard your voice and I knew you volunteered to answer that question. So <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. Did that, um, Jeff, what was that lady's name? Did that answer her question? I can't oh, see that the was Anita. And yeah. Anita, did that, did that answer your question? Do you have any other questions about the wires? Uh, we did answer the question, but she's uh, disappointed to learn that there will be wires uh, on the streets in front of the houses and crossing the streets. She didn't think it'll be attractive. Okay, I understand that. I'm um, Courtney Clint. I'm not sure if we have any other uh, other information to provide about that. But I, I think Courtney did a good job of describing that there'll be very thin wires and they'll be out of the way of um, obstructions. Yeah, uh, Chad, this is Clint. Uh, hey, Clint. TPW Transportation Management. The existing lighting in the neighborhood, 
Um, if we, we did some cost estimates and to run underground wire and conduit and conductor essentially place this project out of our budget range. And also, you know, we're, the existing lighting that's out there is overhead in most cases. So this is actually a conversation that goes back a few years between uh, my predecessor, Marisa Conlon and the Neighborhood Association about the request for additional lighting. So it's not so much that, um, you know, that uh, so to, to meet the project objectives are to include mid span lighting that Chad has shown and illuminate intersections and also upgrade the the overhead lighting. Um, the across the city we have another bond project we're doing right now. It's called the 2018 LED conversion project in four distinct areas, um, and that's what we're doing is we're focusing on safety lighting, overhead wiring, wood poles, and LED lights to help with maintenance issues. So. It's, it's not just in in this specific neighborhood, but overall for us to achieve the most amount of lights to be converted with overhead uh, to improve the overhead lighting and reliability of the system. That's that's really the the reason for this. So um, we've had a few neighborhood associations. If you want to contact me after the fact, Anita, I'll put my information in the chat box. I'll be more than happy to walk you through the 2018 bond. Uh, LED conversion project that are in numerous neighborhoods. It's essentially focused in the southeast and portions of um, mostly south and mostly east Fort Worth of 35 and 30. So let me type my name inf uh, information in, and I'll be in the uh, I'll be off tomorrow, off Monday, but I'll get back with you um, as to exact scope of that. I'll provide maps, numbers, but with that big project, we're doing over 3,500 lights uh, conversions and installations. So this is one. This is modeled after that to where in the Paschal neighborhood, there have been discussions in, uh, for over time to improve the lighting situation. So that's that's how. So it's not just one neighborhood association, um, Anita, but it's going to be many. So I'll, I can get with you next week with those maps and all that if that's if that'll work with for you. Thank you, Clint. I really appreciate that history and um, answer. That was really helpful. I think, Jeff, I think I saw a couple more questions from Anita pop up. Yeah, yeah. while well, Clint's typing in, um, the neighborhoods to the east and west that you showed uh, light pole locations earlier, uh, do we know if those are uh, wired uh, as well, overhead wires as well? Courtney or Clint, you would be familiar with I can answer that. Um, yes, they are. Actually, uh, we're looking at, except for brand new developments over the past five years, 90% of everything that's out there is actually the overhead wires. It's the most direct and easily maintained. So if you have a light that goes out, our guys can get out there and fix it within two hours compared to underground um, with the metal poles. Those are gonna take up to three to six months to get to. So this is preferably more what I like in the neighborhoods to make sure that we can make sure the lights are always working and that everybody's safe on the roadway. So, and it gives the biggest bang for the buck as well in these neighborhoods. So for me, I'd prefer to have the overhead wiring and it's very small wiring. We're not talking about the big encore giant wires that are wrapped. These are small, they fit in my hand. I have very small hands. You can't see that, um, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's definitely better and it's easier to maintain and that way we can make sure y'all are safe. Thanks, Thanks Courtney. Um, the, the other question that Anita had was, do, uh, what was the name you mentioned from the Neighborhood Association? Um, Clint, I think you actually said uh, Marissa Conlin, which is uh, our representative that was previously over the department. Um, I, I don't think we mentioned a specific neighborhood person, did we, Clint? I think the when the project, yeah, and the project charter between capital and transportation, I believe I provided that. I believe it was a immediate or recent uh, past president of Pascal, um, and Jeff, not Jeff. Um, I can't. I'm sitting here, and uh, this happens. I get at the meetings, my mind goes blank. So, Chad, the gentleman who I in, introduced you to with the neighborhood association, do you have that name handy? I don't. I have it in my email. I can find that. I'd be happy to send send that to Anita if, if she would like that. Yeah, I, I'm sitting here. She's got all the right questions. I just feel like <laughs> my responses aren't adequate. Give me just a second and I'll circle back with that name, Anita. 
She's also thanking you for verifying the east and west neighborhoods are wired. She'll drive those streets so she can get a better feel for what it's going to look like. So. She's saying she doesn't need another name. She just heard Marissa's and she thought that we were talking about someone who represented the neighborhood, but that was actually a representative of the city that Clint mentioned. So she said she doesn't need another name. I think I just saw that pop up, Jeff. I see those questions in the chat box pop up and then they fade away in about two seconds. Uh, circling back to Rick's question, I got the coffee smoke for that. Oh, okay. Thanks, Sarah. So yeah. how many new polls? We are installing 71 new polls. 71? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Chad, one thing I would like to... Um, yeah, he's still here. He said, thank you. Um, one thing I do okay. want to mention is I, I had to mute the call and users earlier because we were getting some, uh, a lot of feedback. Um, if the, you two, uh, phone users want to unmute, you just hit star six and it'll unmute your line again. I apologize for having to do that. But. Okay, well, I'm going to go back to the end slide and make sure everybody sees my contact information so they can call me or email me if they have any other questions or um, a month from now, if they want to ask about the status of the project, feel free to call me and, and ask me about that. That's that'll be fine. Uh, again, my phone number for the call in users is 817-392-8021. 817 My name is Chad Allen. Um, my email address is chad.allen at fortworthtexas.gov. That's C-H-A-D dot A-L-L-E-N. And then the at symbol, Fort Worth, Texas, and that's all one word, dot gov. Chad.allen at fortworthtexas.gov. That's all one word spelled out. And... Um, Chad, this is Clint. The name I'm thinking of is Rick Garcia. Okay. Okay. Who we met with and then Marisa Conlon on the city side. Okay. Rick Garcia from the Nepasco Member Association and this was back in 2019. We received the, the status update on the project and then we only recently kicked it off within the year. So you're, that's who I, the names I was thinking of. Okay. Hopefully that will help Anita. We're in no hurry to end this meeting. Um, we are able to uh, stay on here as, as long as you want and answer any more questions. Hey, thanks, Courtney. I appreciate it. Thanks for putting my information in the chat box, Courtney. No problem. And I also put the project page on the city's website, the link right there again, uh, towards the bottom in case anybody wants it. Uh, for those that are calling users, um, you can just go to the city's website, which is fortworthtexas.gov, and in the search box type Pascal, and it is the very first uh, page that pops up, uh, so you can find it pretty easily. Does anyone else have any questions about the project or would you like to go back and look through these maps? I can go back and talk about every single one of these maps again. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know y'all don't want me to do that, uh, but are there let's, any... let's start from the slide number one left to right top to bottom chat. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I know that was monotonous, um, but are, if there's any other questions, we'd love to try to help. Thank you, Anita. We really appreciate it. Rick, I just saw that question pop up. So this presentation is at the project web page. And Jeff, did you say you put that web page in the chat box, that link? 
I, I did, and that and the entire presentation is in PDF form on that page already. Uh, yes, and we'll also link we'll link to the entire project. Uh, the entire video should be on there sometime tomorrow. Hopefully, it depends on how fast we get it converted. So, um, Rick, yes, sir. Those this presentation is on there, and it includes those maps. You're welcome. No problem. Okay, well, um, if there's no other questions, I guess, Jeff, tell me if you don't want to, I, I'm f happy to hang around. Um, we can end the meeting soon. I just wanted to pull up this project status and schedule slide one more time and tell everyone that we are going to be out in the neighborhood, walking around, looking at these poll locations, hopefully sometime in the next couple of weeks. So you might see us out there. Feel free to stop and ask us any questions while we're out there, but we will be out there looking at every single one of these poll locations um, before we move on to finish the design of the project. Hi, this is Anita. May I make a comment? Yes, ma'am. Earlier, I'm, I'm in a building. There was a, um, a testing of a, an alarm system going on, so I couldn't, I couldn't speak earlier. Um, okay. I, is it possible when you guys go out there to just have maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 flyers in case people on the street wondering what you're doing and on that flyer have, you know, like your contact information and the project uh, online website information. This is a neighborhood with a lot, um, <laughs> pardon me. This is a neighborhood with a lot of um, rentals. And so even if, even if um, say an owner of a property might know what's going on, the tenants may not. So they might be extra curious. I would be happy to do that. Yes, we can, we can do that. I think that could be useful. I mean, it, I think could, there's good chances no one's going to ask what you're doing, but there's a lot of development in the area. There's a lot of people trying to buy properties. You just never know. There's a lot of people, so people could ask you what you're doing. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I appreciate the um, feedback and the advice. Thanks. So um, one other thing I will mention, um, I'm going to volunteer Chad. He's happy to come out and talk to neighborhood association meetings. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, he's, uh, we've been out there once. His boss is actually was out there not too long ago, a, cu a couple months ago. Um, Chad can come. Uh, I'm happy to come with him, although I can't really answer those questions. Um, and we also will have, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, uh, at least one more meeting before you actually start construction. We typically have a, a pre-construction meeting. So. Yes, that's correct. So I, I think people were notified of this meeting by the city using property owner lists. Um, and, and I'm not sure about resident lists or, you know, like property, property owner lists as well as property, uh, property lists. I don't know what the right word is for where tenants might live, for example, or a tenant, a person lives an owner occupied home. Um, do you do any other mailings besides public meeting notifications regarding the project or do you plan to? Um, so, Jeff, I please answer this, but I just want to start out by saying, yes, when we sent out the mailers, we tried to identify property owners who may or may not live at, at that property. They could be renting that home to someone else. So we definitely tried to mail one of the mailers to the property owner. And then we also tried to mail it to the actual renter of the residence that was in the project area. So every house in the project area should have gotten a mailer. And then folks who live elsewhere but own homes in the project area should have also gotten the mailers. And then, Jeff, can we brainstorm about when it, when we're when else we're going to mail things out? I know during before our next meeting, before our pre-construction community meeting, we'll send out mailers again. Um, actually, before construction, um, you'll see door hangers out there on the doors of your homes, but that'll just be weeks before construction starts. It won't be a long time. Or will there be any other time, Jeff, when we send out something like that? So, not necessarily in the mail. Um, we, we also uh, put notices out on next door. Uh, we try to send it to neighborhood leadership so they could share it um, by email. 
Uh, we also put it out on our social media channels, so if anybody pays attention to those, uh, um, they'll see them. It goes out in our city news. Uh, it's posted on our calendar, uh, and hopefully, uh, usually, uh, I know Councilmember Beck's pretty good about it. They share that type of information as well with the neighborhood. So. So again, I think what you're saying is all sounds really good. Um, I think the city does a great job and I was really pleased to see this this notification of this meeting in like the city news and then on next door, I saw it a couple places as well as receiving notification. Again, I just wanna reiterate or repeat, I don't know the right word, but um, this, is a, this is a lot of college student population who lives in this neighborhood who are not gonna, the people who hear it today might not be here in six months to hear it again. So I like the idea of the door hangers, you know, just beforehand. Um, but just just be aware that that just for letting people to let people know about what's going on, that just creates a different challenge. So um, I just encourage you to keep that in mind. Um, and and I think I don't think I don't remember this flyer doing it, but hopefully future flyers or mailings will include that website location so that. Um, you know, obviously you can't provide, you know, a 10 page slide or whatever in the mail, but to, for people who are interested in learning more, um, I think that would be good for information because again, we have a, we have a large population of transient, um, you know, t occupants. Sure. The, ori um, the original, there goes my cat. The original um, flyer did not have the project page on it because the project page wasn't created yet. Uh, it is now, so we can be sure to add it to future anything, any future mailings or handouts we do. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Jeff, are there any more in the chat box? There's nothing else in the chat box. Okay. Well, I just really appreciate everyone attending, um, the folks in the neighborhood and residents attending this meeting. We we really appreciate the feedback and, and thanks for taking time to come and learn about this project tonight and, and, and give us input. And then um, Josh and Sarah, thanks for coming and helping me answer questions. Sarah, thanks for counting those polls for me. And Courtney and Clint, I really appreciate your help with the meeting. So, and Jeff, you're awesome. So thanks, thanks everybody for your help and thanks everyone for attending the meeting. Um, again, I'm in no hurry to get off. It's kind of seems like we don't have any more questions. Does anyone have any more questions or would like some more information so we can provide it? Jeff, what do you think? Uh, I, I think we're good. Um, just, you know, as a reminder, if you think of something afterwards, uh, when we're done, feel free to call or email Chad. Uh, he'd be happy to answer any additional questions. Or if you see him out there walking around, feel free to pop your head out the door and, and say hello and ask him questions at that point. Okay. All right, well, I, I think we're all done. And again, we really appreciate the attendance. Thank you too, Anita, we appreciate it. Everybody have a good night. Thanks for hosting, Chad. Bye. Thank you, Chad. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Clint. Thanks, guys.